wonder why some kids snore or breathe through their mouths? It all starts with the growth and the position of their skulls, which forms the airways. So today, we'll be breaking the anatomy down of a human skull from the nose to the neck and why it may be important to maybe know a little bit more than your head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Welcome to the jaw complex. When you inhale, the air enters the nasal nares, also known as the nostrils, and flows through your nasal cavity, then flows to the pharyngeal airway, which is made up of three regions. Once the air leaves the nasal cavity, it enters the nasopharynx, the upper back part over here. Then, as the air moves further, it enters the oropharynx, the space here behind your tongue. Then lastly, the hypopharynx, which is a mid to lower throat region. From there, it's the larynx, trachea, and straight to your lungs. Now, 80% of skull growth is completed by age 2 and 90% by age 10. The size and positioning of the jawbones directly affect the size and efficiency of the airway. At the end of this video, I'll be going over some warning signs to watch out for in children, as early intervention is very important. My name's Dr. Jafari. If you like videos like this, please make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notifications. Next, the anatomy of the skull. There's four key bones that we're going to be talking about today. The maxilla, the mandible, the hyoid, and the zygomatic bones. First up, the maxilla. This is your upper jaw. It's actually a pair of bones fused together at the midline. The maxilla is the foundation of your face holding the upper teeth and forming the roof of your mouth and even the floor of your nasal cavity. The maxilla doesn't move much. It's locked into the skull with sutures. It's these zigzag joints. Wait a second. If the floor of your nose is the roof of your mouth, does that mean the bigger your maxilla, the bigger your nasal airway? Well, yes. The maxilla is considered the most crucial bone in the skull. And for good reason. People with crowded teeth typically have a narrow maxilla. A underdeveloped maxilla constricts more than just the nasopharynx. But moving on. Now, the zygomatics. Your cheekbones. These beauties bridge the maxilla to the side of the skull. The temporal bones. Framing your face. These are the secret to those high sculpted cheeks you see in the mirror or wish you had. They don't move, but they steal the shell, giving your face width, symmetry, and that photogenic lift. By age two, they're about at 75 to 80% of their size and fully set by your 20s. Strong zygomatics, you're most likely a sigma giga chad. What am I reading? Now meet the mandible, your lower jaw. This is the skull's only truly movable bone thanks to the temporomandibular joints, TMJ, connecting it to the temporal bone. It's a powerhouse, holding your lower teeth and your tongue, allowing you to chew, speak, and yawn. Fun fact, the mandible is the largest and strongest bone in your face. At birth, it's in two halves, but those fuse at around age one. The mandible keeps growing throughout your teens, reaching full size around 18 to 22. Though it does shift slightly later throughout your life as you lose teeth or grind them down. It shrinks? Literally it shrinks. As you get older? Yeah, like literally. <sighs> Let me cry. The length and size of the mandible is extremely important for the positioning of your tongue. It keeps it up and out so it doesn't fall back in the oropharynx. and allows for the tongue to act like a natural palatal expander for the maxilla. Some people would call this mewing. The TMJ is also why the mandible stands out. It's a hinge and a glider, allowing you to open wide and side to side and front and back. No other skull bone has that kind of freedom and it's built tough. Studies show it can withstand forces up to 200 pounds per square inch when you bite down. So basically your opening muscle, like, so if you ever like the crocodile hunter, they always go from behind and they lock 
the jaw because the jaw is hard to open up. And so then they can control the alligator, the crocodile. The biting force is really high. Right. The opening force is really weak. Last but not least, the hyoid bone. This little guy is a bit of an oddball. It's technically not even attached to the skull directly. It's shaped like a tiny horseshoe or the letter U. It sits in your neck just below the mandible. Held in place by ligaments and muscles. It's the only bone in your body that doesn't articulate with another bone. So what does it do? Well, it anchors your tongue and larynx. Crucial for swallowing and speaking. Without it, you'd struggle to say hello or gulp down your lunch. It's small but mighty and is fully formed by your early teens. However, the position of this bone is correlated to the growth of the maxilla and the mandible, which is important for the hypopharynx of your airway. Together, these four bones are the most important to look out for in the developing child's airway. The maxilla builds the base, the mandible drives motion, the zygomatic sculpture style, and the hyoid holds it all together. Most of their growth wraps up by age two, hitting full form by 20 years old. They're not just functional, but they're the reason why your face makes your face. From what I've seen, here are some things to look out for in, in children that may indicate that they have narrow jaws or a narrow airway. Firstly, look at them. If they have sunken eyes or are always mouth breathing or even lines in their neck from forward head posture, this could mean a deficiency in the development of their jaws. If you suspect your child may have some form of breathing issues, it is extremely imperative to intervene with airway-focused expansion. With devices such as a palatal expander or a marpee to assist with the development of their jaws.